Hello, I'm Peter Holden. I'm a freelance writer and lecturer, but I never intended to be. And I better go right back to the beginning because I've always been passionately interested in birds. Ever since I was probably three or four, looking at bird books belonging to my father, just looking at the pictures. And then when I was seven, I wrote in my school book, when I grow up, I want to be an ornithologist. Now, I don't know who taught me what an ornithologist was, but never mind. And I remember my parents saying, you cannot have a job watching birds. So that was sort of not really a primary aim. Um, I had a checkered education. I didn't go to university. I did A-level history and um, current affairs, it was called, sort of politics, really, uh, because my school was very poor on biology and sciences generally. But in my teens, I'd also run a youth club, and I believe very strongly in working and encouraging young people. I also did some volunteering. And I volunteered for the RSPB to help them run an exhibition in London and got to know some of the staff. But when I left school, I hadn't got ornithology or RSPB in mind. I became a freelance historian, well, um, a researcher, really, for a genealogist, uh, researching family trees and pedigrees for rich Americans, as far as I could see. And that really wasn't going anywhere. And then I saw a job advertised for the RSPB in their education department. And it was an assistant education officer. You didn't have to be a teacher. I applied for it. I knew a bit about the RSPB. I was passionately interested in birds. And I'd been doing this youth work. And the combination of those things gave me a pretty good position to get the job. And when I got there, I found it's a much more small organisation than it is now. But uh, it was I was a very small cog in a much bigger wheel. And it was a very minor role, uh, assistant to the education officer. But the one sort of Cinderella part of that department was the junior membership called then the Young Ornithologist Club. And I became very concerned that children were really the future. And there was a, a something very important to do here to encourage them and ensure that the numbers grew and to make more and more children aware of birds, nature and the environment. And birds are such a natural way into the environment. They're the thing you get to know first. So it was a really good point to start. And I also found that using the RSPB got me into places that uh, I wouldn't have otherwise have got to myself. So I became a, a consultant to the television programme Blue Peter. Found myself in their garden making things out of yoghurt pots every so often. Um, I also I got involved in the early days of the really wild show and got to know Chris Packham. And he was very useful because when we wanted to do something for children, we could involve Chris in it and that was good. And similarly, um, my media work got me in touch with Bill who was also a good ally. So much so that in the 1990s, he and I made a series of programmes for BBC Natural History Unit in Bristol um, called Bird in the Nest. Welcome back to Bird in the Nest and the Birdmobile parked outside the Robin's Nest. But a lot of the action at the moment is... The and we did 34 live programmes in a year, all about birds' nests on BBC One. Um, a huge audience, but um, they then disappeared for a few years and it popped up 10 years later in, the, in the being Spring Watch. So actually it was involved in the precursor to Spring Watch. So got involved in media through the RSPB. Also got me involved in writing because I've been doing lots of editing. And so when a publisher called Usborne was looking for a new series of bird books, called, well, new series of books, sorry, called Spotter's Guides, they chose birds to be the first one. And they approached me a about writing it, which I did. And that went on to sell, I wasn't on royalties, unfortunately, but it went on to sell thousands and thousands of copies. <clears throat> and then over time, um, I met other publishers, I had other ideas for books. And in a space of about 30 years, I've created uh, 10 different books and together they've sold over a million and a half copies. So, you know, it's really done very well. That's an interesting part of my career. I would never have uh, planned. And the third part, which grew out of the youth work, was volunteering, because we found that to work with adults who wanted to help children get more interested in birds, you had to train them. And there was all sorts of health and safety issues. And we were very early in on that training, and we put a good, I think, a good training package together. And the RSPB recognised this, and I found after a year or two, I gradually accrued the responsibility for training across the RSPB as a whole, and then took on the whole of the responsibility for RSPB volunteers, which these days is about 15,000 people. 
and we put together a policy and training and all the things you need to do when you're working with volunteers. But it made me very aware of the value of volunteering, which is where I started, which was way back at my roots, when you remember, with me helping with that exhibition, was that it's the, way, it's the ideal way in. And the people I was seeing as volunteers fell into broad categories. There were a whole range of different people wanting to do volunteering, but there were people who wanted work experience, their first foot on the ladder, if you like, who wanted to know what conservation work was like. There were people who were returning to work for after a gap for one reason or another, sometimes unemployment, sometimes young mums. It was all sorts of things. There were also people who retired who just didn't want to give up, who had a lot to offer, have a lifelong experience to offer. Um, and there was nothing that volunteers couldn't actually not do when you still came to analyse it. And then there were other people who just wanted to volunteer because they liked the social side of it, because they uh, got a kick out of it and they also liked meeting other people. So I became passionately supportive of volunteering. And those were my chief roles of youth and volunteer work with the RSPB all the way through until um, about eight, nine years ago when I left full-time job, but they didn't let me go completely. And I'm now their only, oh no, one of two actually, <laughs> full-time lecturers. Sorry. So I left in uh, eight years ago. And uh, since then, I have been one of their two lecturers. And I go around the country talking to their local groups. And I found there are other people who want talks as well. And I've discovered cruise ships. Now, cruising is not my ideal holiday, but gosh, the ships go to nice places. And uh, there are lots of people on them who would like to know more about the wildlife they're seeing. And especially if you're going up north in the summer, if you're going to North Norway, Iceland, Greenland, um, to actually go on those ships and talk about the birds, the wildlife, the whales that are around the ships. <clears throat> this is enjoyed and I can often be talking to an audience of 100 or 200 people. So this is really my, my big challenge is to get the message of birds, wildlife, conservation over to as many people as it's possible to um, using whatever skills I happen to have and I, I'm a great believer that volunteering uh, is often the key way in of getting yourself know, get yourself known, because that's still important, even in these days where it perhaps shouldn't be, but it is. But it's also, of course, knowing what the work is and what's involved and getting a feel for it to know whether you like it or not. So I would recommend to anybody who is looking around and wanting to get a taster for the future, um, then do consider volunteering as your first step. But I'm happy to answer any other questions. I've got all sorts of other thoughts because my career, even from birds, has taken me into school governorship, um, church wardenship, and now I sit on a parish council, which I would never have dreamed about. And all those provide rich, lifelong experiences. And I find that even these days, I am still learning. Um, I learn about schools, through education, through being a governor. I learn about from a parish councillor, I learn about conservation from the point of view of planning and what can and can't be done in the countryside. So um, it's making a contribution to the environment and also to the communities at large.